Thank you for coming today, and thank you very much for your patience in waiting. I'm Diana Cooley, uh, Supervisor for the Media Relations Unit. We're here to brief you today in reference to the officer-involved shooting that occurred at East Smoky Hill Road and South Mobile Way. Speaking first will be Sergeant Matt Files, that's spelled F-Y-L-E-S, with the Major Crimes and Homicide Unit. Then you'll be hearing from Chief Metz, M-E-T-Z. Uh, I just want to make sure you know that the case is still under investigation, and there may be some questions that we may, may not be able to answer at the end. Um, and we will ask you to reserve those questions for the end. Amen. I want to begin with what uh, brought the officers to Smoky Hill and Moline on the attack. Oh, you can leave them on the boat. You can leave them on the boat. Yeah. Uh, so on February 9th um, at 9.13 p.m., uh, the Ward Communications received a 911 call from a party, female party, reporting that uh, she was being felony menaced by an armed male. Uh, their vehicles were side-by-side -side in traffic in the area of East Mississippi Avenue and essentially the I-225 exchange, preparing to go southbound. The reporting party indicated that uh, the male <coughs> in the vehicle next to her uh, produced a handgun, pointed the handgun at her and her husband, and uh, at which point uh, she made the turn and began to flee. She was followed by the suspect for a short period of time while she was in communication with 911. She provided a description of the male that was armed. She provided a description of the vehicle that he was driving. This initiated a call for service. Officers responded uh, to make contact with the victim and to check the area. They were unable to locate the suspect or the suspect vehicle. <clears throat> they took a report from the reporting party of the felony menacing. The officers that uh, responded that night then submitted that report and completed their watch. Those same officers returned to work on February 10th. They were carrying out their duties as patrol officers when they were in the area of East Smoky Hill and South Chambers Road. This was approximately 11.20 p.m., just before uh, the incident involving the shots fired. They were in that intersection, and they observed a vehicle matching the description of the party who had felony menaced uh, the female and her husband the day prior, the report that those officers had taken. They saw this vehicle traveling eastbound on East Smoky Hill Road from South Chambers, at which point they got behind the vehicle and ultimately attempted a traffic stop of that vehicle. The traffic stop did take place uh, there at East Smoky Hill and South Moline. As the officers uh, were pulling over the vehicle and were stopping their vehicle, the suspect immediately began to exit his vehicle. The officers, uh, obviously with the knowledge that they had from the previous incident that the party was armed in that incident, driving that vehicle uh, were obviously very concerned. They saw the party exit and the party matched the description that had been given by the victim of the felony menacing. Uh, the officers immediately exited their vehicle, immediately started giving commands to try to gain compliance from the, from the subject. The subject did not comply and advanced on the officers. Uh, at some point, <clears throat> the officers, as they were giving orders, noted that the suspect turned around and began to uh, walk back towards his vehicle. Uh, at this point, uh, fearing that he may be accessing a weapon or going for a weapon, uh, one of the officers advanced on the subject and attempted to gain uh, physical compliance by going hands-on. Uh, when that officer made it up to the uh, subject, uh, the subject produced a handgun and began to point it at the officer. The officer fired his weapon, at which point the suspect went down. The officers immediately started to render aid, uh, continue to render aid until fire rescue arrived. The party obviously was transported to the hospital, unfortunately succumbed to his injuries, and was pronounced. Uh, that party is uh, taken down to the Arapahoe County Coroner's Office, and they completed an autopsy on that party today. They'll be releasing ID through Arapahoe County Coroner's Office. Of course, this investigation is ongoing uh, in conjunction with the Denver Police Department. Uh, homicide unit, the Aurora Police Department Major Crime Homicide Unit as a product of the 2015 Senate Bill. We'll continue to investigate this. Uh, obviously, we're in communication with the District Attorney's Office providing them information. They'll ultimately 
do a culpability review of the officer's actions in this incident. I'll give it to Chief Counsel. Thank you. Again, my name is Nick Metz, uh, the Chief of Police for the Aurora Police Department. And you've heard it twice, uh, you're going to hear it three times, and that, that is that this is an active, ongoing investigation. So the information we're sharing with you is what we can share with you. Um, some of the information we provide may be subject to change as the investigation continues. Um, and then just also understand that when I'm done with my portion of uh, this uh, press conference and we open it up for questions, there may be some things we can't share with you because we haven't gotten as far as we need to in the investigation. Um, obviously, my main responsibility and the department's main responsibility following uh, this officer-involved shooting is to ensure that we conduct a credible and transparent investigation. And as Sergeant Files said, part of doing that is making sure that we are utilizing partners uh, not only from the uh, Denver Police Department's Major Crimes Unit, uh, who responded to the scene uh, that night and have been part of this investigation since it occurred, but also in consult with the 18th Judicial District Attorney's Office. Um, the, as the investigation continues and we complete that investigation, as Sergeant Files also said, uh, we will submit that report uh, to the uh, 18th Judicial District Attorney's Office. They will review it, they'll determine culpability if there is any, and then they will return that case file back to us with whatever uh, decisions they make. Uh, once the review is completed, our department's force review board will conduct a review of that, of that case and will make a recommendation to me uh, for a final decision as to whether or not the officer's actions that night uh, were within policy. If it is determined that the actions of the officer or officers was within policy, uh, the case will be considered complete. If, it's, if, there are, uh, if there's parts where they believe that uh, the officers acted not within the policy of the department, it will be forwarded to internal affairs for investigation. And as we do on, all, on these kinds of incidents, we'll also conduct a tactical review because obviously we want to make sure that in any kind of critical incident that we're involved with, that we learn from it and we find out and determine whether things could have been done differently or um, and, and just kind of go from there. One thing I just want to make sure is clear here that the officers who were involved in this incident have fully cooperated um, and they've provided their statements. Uh, just a little bit about the officers that were involved. Uh, the primary officer, and then when I say the primary, this was the officer who um, uh, shot the subject. Uh, he has been with the uh, Aurora Police Department for five years. Uh, this is the only police department that he's worked for. He's assigned to uh, District 3. Uh, he was the only officer that shot. He's 33 years of age. He has no disciplinary history. He has no previous officer-involved shootings. He is on administrative reassignment with pay. Uh, he is also a field training officer and has an excellent reputation in the department. Uh, his partner uh, is a 29-year-old female officer. She's actually a student officer. She graduated from the academy just a few short months ago. Uh, so she's only she's been on the department for less than a year. She did not shoot. Uh, the cover officer who also um, responded to the scene who did not shoot is uh, 33 years of age um, and has been on the department for 10 years. I think I'm going to leave it at that for right now and then just go ahead and open up for questions. Um, do you, are you going to name the officers? Not at this point. Okay. And then... Do y'all know what started the call the previous night where he was menacing? And do you mean menacing? He's like waving the gun. Like, was that road rage or did they know each other? Like, where, where that was? My understanding, and I'll ask uh, Sergeant Files to correct me if I'm wrong, my understanding was basically kind of a road rage situation in which the subject uh, produced a weapon, as Sergeant Files said, racked uh, the gun so that the uh, victims could actually see what he was doing. Um, obviously, uh, the victims were in fear for their safety and immediately exited the uh, freeway and did their best to get away from him um, until they were able to get to a safe place and call 911. And he did chase after them for a bit? That's my understanding, yes. Are you able to tell us if the suspect was known to police, if he had any run-ins prior to this incident? I, I can't speak for Aurora right yet. We're still looking into that. Um, he does have priors in other parts of the state and other parts of the country. I can't go into that any further right now. 
Hey, did he get back to the car and get the gun from the car, or was the gun on his person? My understanding, again, I'll ask Sergeant Files to correct me if I'm wrong, was that he, he initially got out of the vehicle, approached the officers, did not have the gun on him at the time. Uh, the officers gave him very, very clear instructions. Uh, he did not heed those orders, ran back to his car to where now he's in a situation where, or the officers are in a situation they cannot see what he's doing. Um, the officers, um, the one officer, the one who fired the, the shots, ended up advancing back to the vehicle. Uh, he felt it was in better safety if he could actually go hands-on with the subject. Um, I think one of the things that's important to note here is that one of the neighbors who and that lives right near the house actually heard officers yelling at him several times to uh, whatever the orders were that they were giving him, but they were they were heard by them. Chief, you mentioned the uh, the gender of the officers. Uh, can you talk about the race of the, the the victim and the officers as well? I'll, I'll ask uh, Sergeant Files to. I don't know the the race of the victim. Certainly. So uh, the shooting officer is a white male. The uh, cover officer, also a white male. The uh, recruit officer is a Hispanic female. The subject, the deceased subject, is a white male. Do you Sergeant know if the officer? You, you described it as he began to point the gun at the officers. Did he actually like raise it and point it at them, or just what does began to point the weapon at them? What does that mean? Right. Okay. So the officers indicated that the, uh, the subject uh, retrieved the weapon and was bringing the weapon up on. To their person, so uh, it was essentially targeting the weapon. Were any of the officers wearing body cam during this? Yes, officers were equipped with body cam. And is that something that would be released at a later date? That's something you could work with the PIOs on. And they were recording the body cams? Yes. It was caught on? I've actually seen them. Were, you said the officer put his hands on. Was the officer hurt at all? Was he injured during the scuffle of the patient? Remember you described it? The officer did sustain some minor injuries, uh, not as a result of uh, being assaulted. Um, they were injuries as a result of uh, firing the weapon with some debris. Pardon? The with debris. Okay. Is there any indication the suspect had a mental illness of some description? The investigation is still ongoing. We're looking into the background of the, of the subject. Uh, that's obviously something that we're pursuing to see if the, that was an issue. Do you have any idea if he owned the gun legally? I can indicate to you guys that he did own that gun. That gun has been shown to be purchased by him. I think you mentioned that the name of the victim will be released through the coroner's office. Is there a reason that the police department is not releasing the name? We just defer to the coroner's office for the release of IDs. What kind of gun did the suspect have? Uh, Semi-automatic hand. How many shots did the officer fire? We're still looking into all of that. We have to uh, obviously do some follow-up in terms of searching the vehicle and, and accounting for all the rounds, casings, and fire projectiles. So it's still under investigation. The suspect get a shot off? No. It's still under investigation. We haven't yet been able to account for everything. Have you spoken to the, the menacing victim since the shooting? Is she able to confirm <laughs> that this was the person from the night before? I can indicate that obviously there was the the original report um, following up on a lot of different things as relates to the, the OIS. Uh, obviously, I'm looking into every angle, so it's still ongoing. Do you know what exactly happened the night before in the road rage? Did somebody give somebody the finger or try to run, cut somebody off, changing lanes? Like what started this? Right. I can tell you that the original report indicated that there was nothing that the victims were aware of that their conduct was a catalyst for the complication with the armed party. They were simply driving, um, their attention was drawn to the vehicle next to them, and they were menaced with the weapon. So as far as they were aware, there was nothing on, no conduct by them that initiated it. I'll take one more question if there's one. Are you able to speak about just the current climate? This officer involved shooting the fifth in a week in different areas of Colorado, but I mean, it's been in the headlines, you know, we, we lost three deputies. Um, just what you face uh, on a I, daily basis. This has been, um, I've been in this business for 34 years, and I can only remember another time where I've seen something quite like this, and that was back in 2009 when I was in Seattle. You know, we lost three deputies in, in the month. Um, when you look around the country right now, just in this last week, uh, we lost an officer in Richardson, Texas. 
we lost an officer in Georgia. Two officers in Ohio were gunned down and killed. And just this morning, uh, two off or three officers in Detroit were shot. Um, my understanding is uh, they're, they're all three are expected to survive. Um, so the climate right now is something where obviously we're very concerned. I think, I think where I'm really proud of these officers who, who, who made the stop that night is it would have been just easy for them to just kind of like, you know what, we're not going to do anything. We're going to, you know, yeah, there's, there's risks out there. Those officers continue to do their job. They continue to do what they're sworn to do. They continue to uh, protect this community, protect those who can't protect themselves, put themselves in harm's way uh, when others uh, can't protect themselves. And so um, I think it just goes to show that, you know, in your Aurora Police Department and, and, and all the other police departments around the metro area, you know, our cops are continuing to do their job despite the violence that has been imposed on us uh, over these last few weeks. And you stand behind the actions of your officer? It's, it's too soon for me to give you a definitive. Mm -hmm. um, I will say, I think I feel comfortable in saying that uh, the subject in this case dictated the outcome. This, this, I've, I've seen the video and I, I'm comfortable in saying that uh, adequate warnings were given to him. Um, he had a choice and he had a choice to comply and he had a choice not to comply and obviously he chose not to. Was medical treatment administered to the suspect by um, by the officers involved, or was that given to paramedics? So, good question. Um, I believe we covered it earlier, but just to make sure, once the once uh, the situation had been secured, uh, the officers actually uh, took the man, put him on the ground, um, and began uh, first aid measures, which did include CPR. Uh, they obviously made a request for uh, medical aid from the Aurora Fire Response, uh, Aurora Fire Department, who then came and then took over from there. Thank you all for coming today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.